Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Blue Metals, and I've got a relatively short video for you today. And this video, again, was a request. Um, I've been doing a couple of requests now, and I'm starting to get more requests, and I like it because it's giving me ideas for videos. However, this particular one wasn't something I thought I would, you know, ever get around to doing or even have the interest enough to do. Uh, I've seen people's shop tour videos before, and while I do find it interesting, um, I never thought people would be interested in just the random stuff I have inside my shop and what makes Dark Moon Metals work. Uh, people are somewhat surprised to find out that everything I have is in a two-car garage. Uh, maybe a hair wider than a traditional two-car garage, but it fits two cars just the same. And uh, I have about 750 square feet to work in. And through very creative camera angles and the constant uh, dodging of shots that include tables that you can't see because there's so much stuff on them and projects strewn everywhere you've only seen a small portion of what I have but you've seen most of it so today for the first time you're gonna get a chance to see the shop in its entirety and this again is presented by viewer uh, request and about two days worth of cleaning Dark Blue Metals essentially operates out of a shop that's a two-car garage it's a little wider than a traditional two-car garage because You've got a two-car garage door, and you have a walk door, so it might be about eight feet wider than your average two-car garage. But there are a lot of people out there who seem to think we're operating in a ton of space, and I'll admit that has a lot to do with creative camera angles. But I've had some viewer requests, and here is the answer to that request. This is the Dark Moon Metal Shop Tour. As I come into the garage, I'm going to stand roughly in the center of the big door and give you a panoramic view. Uh, we'll start over here. And we are going to walk up the aisle by the milling machines first. Or milling machine. So, let's close the walk-in door. And we'll start right here. This cabinet holds nothing but Hardware, there's springs, nuts, bolts, screws. I mean, everything you could think of is pretty much in there. Uh, that little three drawer riser right there is all drill bits. And I've got more hardware and boxes for projects. Uh, extension cords, that's where I hang all the hacksaws. I have the floor model rigid drill press right here. All the antique wrenches that came from both of my grandfathers, some from even my great-grandfather. It's kind of dark back there, sorry. Uh, this is the milling machine that you saw me recently use for the mass step video. It's not covered in aluminum shavings anymore though. I have metal storage under there. Those are just the most common wrenches and socket that I use for the mill, so that stays close by. Made myself a little R8 collet rack. Work light. This toolbox is full of just basic inspection tools. Uh, there's tape measures, uh, things for layout, stencils. Yeah. Bunch of triangles. French curves. All the parallels. I recently got a gift and expanded my mill collection a little bit. These are all uh, just used end mills. A couple of them are actually new, but most of them are all used. Uh, next to that I've got my lab plate, and this is upside down with the um, fine surface sitting on an old scrap of carpet. A 20 ton hydraulic press. sandblasting unit and the air compressor that some of you may remember from my air compressor video. Uh, down below here got an emergency generator along with a very old school shop vac. And I'm going to stop at the air compressor for now and I'm actually going to turn around and walk down the other side. I'll come up to the front first I guess. That's where my metal cutting bandsaw lives, the horizontal version. Chop saw for wood, 
chop saw for metal. And I built this uh, stop here, nothing uh, fancy. This came off of an automatic garage door opener. This was the track. And uh, it's, it's T stock, which is really cool. I use it, I move this plate back and forth and just clip it in place with a pair of ice grips and that allows me to do repeatable cuts. Came in real handy. Got more storage down below. That is the porta power, the hydraulic tool along with a couple of bottle jacks and a scissor jack. If I come around the corner, this is an air chisel and I've modified this to be inside of this little C-frame kind of deal attached to an old anvil that somebody gave me that had the tail broken off and uh, we use this primarily to texture the rose petals for the copper roses saves us a lot of time because we usually do a whole bunch at once here I have the Grizzly uh, little lathe comes in handy every once in a while although I will never trade this for the Atlas I love the Atlas show you that in a minute bench grinder belt sander bench grinder and then down below I have the uh, anvil underneath the bench grinders that's all steel scrap and that bin I know you can't see it but that's all aluminum and inside that bucket is copper and in that bin it's all scrap wire and then over there that's just random stuff but that's what that whole side of the shop looks like Now if we come into the center of the shop, 90 degrees from the anvil, you're going to find the forge. That is the propane forge, and we do need to pull this out from where it is right now. That's just kind of its little nesting area where it lives. But when we're using it, we do pull it out, we do move the anvil. Uh, it's not too much of a pain in the neck. Next to the forge is my big primary vise. I do that uh, with all my forge work. That's the one I use. It's just huge. And on the same table, I have a uh, three-ton arbor press. Now, this little arbor press has a history behind it. Apparently, this was used in Norwalk at a place called Fodor Farm. And that little shop made props during World War II for the war effort. So this is a very nice old vintage piece of equipment. And the base that this table is sitting on is the original stand for the arbor press. And what I did is I designed this so I could drop the table down a couple inches. But if I ever want to put this press back to its original configuration, the way it was back during World War II, I would just need to remove these four bolts, lift the tabletop off, and put the arbor press back on it. Uh, I love old tools, and I really don't want to modify them if I don't have to, at least to the point where I can't put them back. I really like old-time tools and old-time craftsmanship, and I, I kind of respect it and want to preserve the history of it. Directly across from that, that is the table of vices. You've seen that in a couple of videos. All the C-clamps. It's a storage container. My wood cutting bandsaw that I have proven you can cut metal with. Check out the video. That's all storage. That's all paints and stains and uh, oils, uh, just everything you could think of. I've got alcohol, not that kind of alcohol, that kind of alcohol. I use it for cleaning quite a bit. But yeah, just uh, all kinds of thinners and I've got uh, thread cutting oils. This is where I keep all of the hazardous type of chemicals. It's not like OSHA approved storage, but it's a metal all metal cabinet and I don't worry about sparks or anything too much getting to it. Directly to the left of that I've got the Grizzly uh, 2x72 combination buffer and I've got an old Craftsman 6x48 with a disc on the side of that. Now one of the secrets of the shop, the bench that the two belt sanders are sitting on was actually an old freezer. Uh, <laughs> It, the compressor died and uh, we yanked it out of the basement and the, the dump wanted a huge fee to get rid of this damn thing. I needed a bench and I just took the damn thing, turned it on its side, painted it black, and nobody who comes in here knows this is an old freezer. Uh, took the door off, 
jammed one of my uh, toolboxes into it, built some storage over there, and it works perfect. Now the way these are set up, you may notice how close this is to the door. Uh, never fear, you can still access it pretty easily. Uh, we made these pedestals out of starboard, and all you need to do, you take this pin, pull it out, and the whole unit will rotate so you can get access to it. And there is a lock where I could put the pin back in, there's another hole. Sometimes it's a pain to line up. Of course, this belt sander does the same thing. Behind the belt sanders is all storage. And the only poster I have in the garage. Yes, I'm a geek. Some 6x48 belts, and then all of the other belts are stored here. And this, this is a welding curtain. Uh, it's actually a Shade 10 welding curtain, and that leads into the welding area. The reason that's there is so if I'm here, let's say, teaching the welding merit badge, I can be on this bench welding with the scout, and their parent can be right on the other side of that curtain, completely safe and protected, don't need any kind of special gear, and they can watch exactly what's going on as long as there's an arc present, because it's just way too dark to see through without an arc. Uh, Next to the table of vices, I've got the oxypropylene setup, Miller MIG, bottles, common welding tools, and yes, I have way too many uh, flints. They've just been collecting for years and years and years, and they seem to come free with everything I buy, so I got a ton of those. This is the welding table itself. Down below, I've got the Miller TIG, Miller Synchrowave, and then as we move up, that is the plasma cutter. Now what I've done up here, uh, yeah, more storage up there, what I've done here, I created a couple little kind of catwalks for the plasma cutting torch leads, for electrical, things like that, to come over here to the plasma cutting table, which is uh, not quite centered in the garage up against the back wall, but uh, it's as close to the center as I could get it with all the stuff that I had. And then here's the control system for the plasma cam. Yet more storage. This is the back door of the shop and over here we've got the sink, a very dirty mirror, and this is all of the unfortunate necessary stuff that we need to maintain cars and whatnot when I can be storing metalworking tools here. Yeah, it's, it's almost to the damn ceiling. But I have done my best to condense this mandatory car maintenance stuff to make room for more tools. Got a couple lockers here. One's mine, one's Dana's. And yes, Dana is actually here. There are people who haven't seen her in a long time and they figured, what the heck did Jeff do with Dana? Are they still in business together? Did he drag her out into the middle of the woods and leave her somewhere? And I honestly don't have time for that right now. So she is still here. Besides, I do actually have Girl Scout training. Yes, you would actually survive. Yes. Right now she's doing some research. Uh, we're going to be doing pewter pendants with zodiac signs on them. And this is where Dana spends a lot of her time. This is where she does all the engraving work. Airstrike. Yep. Got her set up with a little drill press of her own. This is my little uh, Sears bench model drill press. And it's sitting on top of a wooden pedestal. It's kind of hollowed out. I did that so when she is engraving she can take her computer and shove it under there so it's off the desk and it's a little bit more protected than it would be if it was just out in the open. This bench right next to Dana is a complete and total disaster. Um, I need to <clears throat> figure out where some of this stuff is going to live. These are folding saw horses, but this is the Craftsman Woodley that I picked up. 
And uh, I've been having a lot of fun with it. It needs to be rewired though, I gotta fix the switch. And then up above here, those are all the turning tools. And more storage. This is mainly just uh, like drywall screws, nails, uh, some wood. Wrenches. Turn around over here. These are all just bolt cutters, things like that. Now next to the plasma cutter, I've got uh, filing cabinets, and these things come in real handy. My other welding helmet's not in here, but if, if you want to store welding helmets in a pretty dust-free and safe environment, filing cabinet, way to go. Down below that, I've got the Hobart MIG that my father taught me how to weld on. And uh, even though I don't use it that much, I still I don't want to get rid of it. I'm just kind of nostalgic that way, I guess. But um, it's going to stay here. Right now I've got it set up for flux core, so uh, I have an excuse to keep it. <laughs> uh, this is all welding goods storage. I've got, um, like this drawer is all plasma cutting tips and TIG torch. Uh, accessories, tungstens, these are all MIG welding tips, spare feed roller for the machine, and uh, oxygen and acetylene torch set. This was also my father's, this is an old Airco and I, I have used this on video before but um, I've retired this set, it needs some serious work and uh, once I have some extra money I am going to send it out and have it completely rebuilt. So let's walk on over here, uh, directly across from the plasma cam is the big welding table, the really thick one that I've showed in the welding table video, and we had that discussion on building welding tables. That's all storage for everything from files, tap and die sets, chisels, punches, just all kinds of stuff. And above that I've got my welding rod storage, that's all uh, electrodes, and above that I've got all of my regular uh, TIG welding rods, stainless, mild steel, etc. If I can back up a little bit, I've got two rollaways full of tools, and uh, no I normally would not have this many tools uh, if I had the option, but I don't separate with tools very easily, and a lot of these that are in these two cabinets were owned by my father, my grandfather, and other relatives that just kind of got passed down through the years to me. But um, all sorts of cool stuff in here. I mean, this is just, you know, all mechanic stuff, spark plugs, oil filters. Those are all just 3 8 drive tools. There's no sockets or anything in there. The sockets have their own drawers. And I try to label everything so people know where stuff goes. Screwdrivers. Precision screwdrivers and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, those are just adjustable pliers. That's just nuts. Tin snips. These are uh, for vinyl siding. Sheet metal tools, crimps. I would not give these up for anything. These are my sheet metal shears. Alright, what else we got? Well, Self-explanatory. Let's go back over by the air compressor. Got a storage rack over here. A wood burning stove. That is just metal storage again. And finally, we are to the Atlas lathe. This is uh, what I said I will never ever part with. When uh, my father passed away, this thing was in pieces because he intended to clean it and we didn't have a manual. Um, I spent a couple of days piecing it back together with basic stuff I was able to find online and I got it working again. But uh, I love using this thing whenever I have the opportunity to do so. I make an excuse to use it if I can't. Uh, <laughs> and there's Dana one more time and over here. 
This is where we stall, excuse me, store all of the corded hand tools. More storage. And last, and most important, if you happen to live in this country anyway, every shop should have a flag. And here, we all get together. And we all get along. Unless you're like Yankees and Red Sox fans, we can't help you guys, but car people, we can help. So, that's gonna end this video. Oh, we still need to get a Canadian flag. Yes, yes, Dana is like from a Canadian bloodline, so. <laughs> well, you need to bring the damn flag. I'm not gonna go get one. I, I, fine, I, I will bring the Canadian flag and we've got a spot right up there where we can hang it. Yes, yes we do. Okay. I, have, I have to take some of the nails out of the wall though. Yeah, that would kind of put a damper on it. Yeah, we, we don't spike other countries' flags. <laughs> Alright YouTube, well I hope that answers the question for my subscriber as to how I have my shop laid out and is it really as small as I say it is. It's not terribly small if it's kept clean, but trust me, this is not going to last. Before the end of the month, you will not be able to see the surface of any table in here. I swear to God. But we're going to end the tour here. I'm going to head back in towards the house. And for now, this has been Jeff at Darkwood Metals. We will see you again soon.